Hey YouTube, Joyboy here. So, chapter 868 of One Piece has dropped. So if you haven't checked out that chapter yet, I suggest that you do so, because I will be spoiling you. But now that you have, let's begin. It finally happened, the moment of truth. The ever so cleverly developed plan backfires. Plan failure. <laughs> the look on everyone's faces, Capone's in particular, man, priceless. I feel so conflicted, right? Because I'm supposed to be rooting for the good guys, the Straw Hats. And, you know, a part of my brain knows that they're going to make it out regardless. So in that sense, it doesn't matter how exactly it comes to be. But I really feel so dirty uh, rooting against the Straw Hats like that. But you know you hear me fanboying over here, but that's not, that's not, that's not it. There's more to it. At the very end of the chapter, when Capone goes castle mode, I'm done. This is why I read One Piece, fam. Oda's boundless imagination, him creating ridiculous shit, is what I live for. But anyway, deep breaths, deep breaths, time to be analytical. Oda started off this chapter completely annihilating any argument that might have existed that Big Mom did not consume Mother Carmel and the orphans. Again, Oda made sure not to visually depict this or mention it in any way, but it can be logically deduced based on the fact that there were two witnesses who saw what happened. And this chapter also seemed to have confirmed that by consuming a Devil Fruit user in some way, whether by whole or in pieces, you can take their power. But now let's talk about the two witnesses. The first of which was the giant. And so after seeing what had occurred, he ran off to Elbaf to inform them of what Big Mom had, had done, keeping in mind that Carmel was their savior, there seems to be little hope that the Giants would ever have forgiven Big Mom, yet we have this incident later with Loki. It seems very strange, we'll talk about it in a bit. And then next, of course, we had Strusen, the, the head chef. Do you guys remember that guy? Yeah, that insignificant character that you never thought would have any importance whatsoever? Turns out to be the oldest and original founder of the Big Mom Pirates along with Big Mom herself. It's surprising how much there is to say based on this reveal alone. Uh, so let's start off with the giant. Uh, so it really seems like it would be impossible for the giants to ever forgive Big Mom. Yet it seemed to almost have happened with the arranged, the planned arranged marriage between Loki and Lola. And so what I'm getting from this is that Loki might be some kind of spoiled dictator. Uh, so it doesn't seem like the giants can forgive Big Mom, but Loki seems to have been sort of fostering that sort of relationship. So it makes me wonder if Loki did this for selfish reasons. Perhaps this sheds a bit of light on Loki himself. But now let's talk about Strusen. And so there's several things that are worthy of mentioning, but to start off with, Strusen witnessed what happened between Big Mom, the orphans, and Mother Carmel, and essentially over a 63 year time period has never informed Big Mom. But what's important about this, I believe, is that despite not telling Big Mom, he knows. So my thoughts about Big Mom and her missing memory, specifically about this particular date, is that it's way too convenient that she doesn't know, uh, but she may possibly have those memories in her mind, and putting her daughter, who's slowly becoming a friend of some kind with the Straw Hats, uh, has the memo memo fruit. She can manipulate memories. These two things just fit. They mesh together very well. But in order for Pudding to start messing around in Big Mom's mind to potentially uh, inform her of what exactly happened or hide the memories or insert new memories so that she could come to some sort of closure, they would first need to know where the problem lies. Uh, and Strusen, having actually witnessed the events, could be the one to inform everyone of what exactly happened in the past with Carmel. He also has had first-hand experience dealing with Mama's rages more than anyone else. I think Strusen may have, after this chapter, Loki, become one of the most crucial characters to this arc. But talking about him a little bit more specifically, it seems that Strusen was vital in shaping Big Mom to be the kind of person that she became. People were talking about Mother Carmel not properly disciplining Big Mom. Strusen, uh, it seems clearly, was far worse. But it's worth noting as well that Strusen seemed to have made a promise to Big Mom, and given her childish mental state, she probably took it to heart, even up until this date, that Carmel would one day return. I heard some speculations after the last chapter, uh, given the reveal that the island in which Big Mom ate uh, the orphans and Carmel seems to be the very same island that went on to become Whole Cake Island, essentially might have implied that Big Mom never left. 
Whole Cake Island. And while it's not completely true, it seems mostly true. And I think this was mainly because... Um, maybe because she expects Carmel to return one day, which is why she would spend the vast majority of her time, especially now, uh, there. And this would become very easy to do once she had a very large crew who she could rely upon to take care of her businesses uh, and affairs outside of Whole Cake Island. Uh, this also might be a big reason why Big Mom never became the Pirate Queen or Pirate King, uh, given that she doesn't. She seems reluctant to leave Whole Cake Island, therefore would do less journeying for pony glyphs, things of that nature, and relies upon her crew uh, and uh, connections to find these things for her. And so to me, it seems pretty obvious that Oda has set up at some point in time Big Mom learning that Mother Carmel died, and specifically she killed her, or at the very least, resolving this, this memory in her mind in some way. And so with this being the case, if this is the one thing that keeps her sort of tied down to Whole Cake Island, then this could also potentially set up, assuming that Big Mom survives this arc, uh, her actually leaving Whole Cake Island. But it's really amazing when you think about it, just how much this one particular day affected Big Mom's entire life. Her life literally after this point revolved around recreating this day and pining over the friends that she lost. Even her moments outside of Whole Cake Island where she's essentially terrorizing people to get them to join in on her cause was for the sole purpose, I believe, of making Totlin the place Mother Carmel envisioned so that when Mother Carmel returned one day she would be very happy. This one missing memory is such a pillar to the construction of Big Mom's every move. I also thought it was funny how Big Mom came to the conclusion that she needed to gigantify everyone so that they were just as big as she is, which was essentially taking Carmel's words at face value when she meant it more figuratively. Definitely some kind of emphasis on the fact that Big Mom just does not understand certain things. And this also works really well with how Big Mom went about trying to create Totlin, and essentially creating this country free of racism, discrimination, all these things, and her mind, she wanted to cause good. Uh, so it really baffled her when people did not automatically accept her desires and wishes. And given her simple mind, it probably pissed her off even more. She just fails to understand what it is that she does and why people react the way that they do. Big Mom badly needed good parenting. And while I'd like to believe that uh, somebody could end up stepping in and fulfilling this role, it honestly just doesn't seem very likely at her age for someone to be able to come in and then t explain to her what she can and can't do. But one thing that this chapter confirmed for me is that Stotland is really a paradise for those who accept Big Mom's vision. Big Mom operates based on one simple rule, accept her dream, accept her guidance, and you will prosper. Choose not to and you will die. Every bad thing that Big Mom has ever done is for the most part explained at this moment. Maybe not completely, but mostly. But basically we're led to believe there are three things that are important to Big Mom. The first of which is her dream for the future of Totlin. Uh, we have her tea parties, which is related to Mother Carmel, and then sweets in general. Rub Big Mom the wrong way in any of these three things and you're likely to end up dead. But I think this chapter also emphasized that Big Mom's end goal is peace. Although her means to get there is wrong, uh, it seems to me that my theory from previously about the twisted justice of the Big Mom Pirates essentially um, punishing those that they view as wicked seems pretty reasonable. So you might be able to add this as an additional rule in which Big Mom operates. Those who kill indiscriminately uh, for no good reason, keeping in mind that Big Mom views her own reasons as good reasons, deserve to die. Probably to Big Mom, the Vinsmoke's reasons for killing is not justifiable, and therefore, I think she actually does believe that she's punishing them. I think I might go in depth on this in a video at a later date. Uh, it's not really important right now. The only thing left that really needs to be explained, I believe, is her treatment of Pound. Uh, specifically, maybe the, her other husbands, which we will touch on a little bit later in this video. But the main thing that I want to talk about is that if you don't go against Big Mom's wishes, if you actually just listen to her and follow what it is that she says, it seems as though she's pretty benevolent. Minus her treatment of Chiffon, which as previously argued is because Big Mom essentially has a childish mentality, sees Lola and Chiffon, and can't control her rage. 
This completely justifies uh, Peckham's loyalty, as well as the loyalty, it appears, of the citizens of Totland itself. But also due to her personality, which is overbearing and over-controlling, which is kind of on point for a mother, this can also have negative impacts on some of her children as well. Specifically for those who desire freedom of choice, and do not want to be told what to do in every aspect of their life. Good examples of this would be Lola and Pudding, but Big Mom will have done nothing specifically for them to actually hate her. Which would perfectly explain why Lola still clearly loves her mother, and expected her to help the Straw Hats. This also might justify Pudding at some point in the future of this arc, attempting to help Big Mom. But we'll talk about this more in just a little bit, there's just so much to talk about. I want to talk about Struzen again, and so if you look at Struzen, uh, it should dawn on you very, very quickly that somebody looks very similarly to him, and that person would be Katakuri. Straight up guys, uh, Struzen's eyes and eyebrows are an exact replica of Katakuri's. This absolutely cannot be a coincidence. Uh, also people have previously speculated that Perospero and Katakuri also look pretty similar. Uh, minus Perospero's tongue, which may be in relation to his Devil Fruit ability. And it's also worth noting that Perospero's nose and Struzen's nose are very similar. So guys, honestly, I think it's almost clear cut at this point in time that Struzen was Big Mom's very first husband and essentially helped her give birth to her first two sons. Now besides this being a whole oh, hell no moment, this potentially sheds light on the fates of Big Mom's 42 previous husbands, which is we assumed that they might be locked up or killed or something strange had happened to them. We were sort of led to believe that we hadn't met them. But given that Struzen was low-key, probably Big Mom's first husband all along, and has maintained his role somewhat in Big Mom's crew, it kind of suggests that maybe we've seen Big Mom's previous husbands before. It's also worth noting at this point in time that Lola and Chiffon are really old, yet we still see Pound in Whole Cake Island. I think most of Big Mom's previous husbands, despite being rejected and essentially cast out of the family, are still there. And let's add something to the speculation, which is that back in chapter 829, when Big Mom went on a rage, we saw this character, who was essentially like a clown-like character. He even had dialogue, but after this point in time, we have not seen him at all. And so guys, him being a clown, he seems very similar to Charlotte Mondor. Uh, and he also appears to be older than Charlotte Mondor. I wonder if this guy was previously one of Big Mom's 42 husbands, who no longer is viewed as a member of the family, but yet still lives in Totland. And so going back to Pound, why exactly did Mama say that she, they could basically dispose of Pound whenever they want to? I honestly think that unlike all of her other husbands, who she essentially doesn't care about at all what they do, um, I think with Pound, it's very similar to how she treated Chiffon. She associates Pound with Lola, and therefore treats him worse than anyone else. And if this is true, this would just be another way in which Oda has misled us about Big Mom's true character and motives. But we still do need an explanation for why exactly she has so many husbands and why she seems to throw them away so quickly, and why she doesn't view them as family. This, I, you know, I don't have any answer for this. And another thing that's worthy of bringing up is, oh my Jesus, Big Mom had a 500 million berry bounty before she even hit puberty, like Jesus. And so let's talk a little bit about the failed plan. And so I think most of us thought that the plan would fail initially. Some of us, including myself, had moments of doubt later on. But uh, finally, what ended up bringing down the plan uh, was Big Mom's scream. Essentially, your scream stopped the rockets. Which is crazy. I mean, I, I've seen some people who aren't exactly happy about this. It seems like a plot contrivance. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Could be construed as an ass pull, but I'm per I'm like I'm fine with it to be honest with you. That scream, as visually depicted, seems completely capable of uh, making rockets explode uh, before they would reach their target. And so once this happened, there was a moment of pure fuck uh, coming from Capone and everyone else, where they're like, "Get the hell out of here! We're screwed." And Caesar comes in to save the day with the escape plan, and this same scream completely crushes the mirror, essentially trapping the tank, the straw tank alliance. And simultaneously after this happened, Katakuri used his uh, devil fruit powers to essentially provide earmuffs for the Big Mom pirates who are still conscious. So at this point, the story reads as following: We're screwed. 
The Big Mom pirates are ready to go. Big Mom, of course, is screaming, but they still do not have any hope of defeating what Big Mom pirates are left. So if they can't run, and we're led to believe they stand no chance of winning in an all-out brawl, but I think it's worth playing devil's advocate here and suggesting maybe they can actually match up with the remaining Big Mom pirates. Essentially implying that Capone doesn't understand the situation fully, or the strengths of his allies, or how weakened his opponents are. But I don't actually believe in this, so then you're left with this question. How is it that they can come out of this situation triumphant? And there are two things which could potentially do this. One of which is the Tamate Bako box, which how it would be open, why this would happen, I have absolutely no idea. Uh, but potentially though, Big Mom Scream itself could make it explode. The other idea, and I think this is what most people are thinking right now, myself included, as I talked about recently, Big Mom is about to go on a rage. This honestly seems far more likely than, than Big Mom just simply screaming for the entirety of the remaining chapters of Whole Cake Island, and or snapping out of it, and being sane. And so, also, it seems like a rage is more likely just because Oda spent time foreshadowing its importance in the story. Uh, all the way back at the beginning of Whole Cake Island, it also plays an important role in her flashback, and so it would make sense for her to go on a rage at some point during these chapters. And so, what's important about this, as explained previously, is that Big Mom cannot differentiate allies and enemies while she is in a rage. And so, with this being the case, it's not just a problem for the Strats, in fact, I, it's less of a problem for the Strats than it is a problem for the Big Mom Pirates and Totland itself. One thing that this flashback has made clear is that Big Mom's vision for Totlin is extremely important to her and her subordinates. And so if Big Mom goes on a rage, essentially attacks her own subordinates, attacks Totlin itself, we also don't know if her scream has affected the citizens from down below. They might be knocked out, they might be in danger. The Big Mom pirates will definitely be concerned for the well-being of the country itself. Oh, it's also worth noting that even before when Big Mom went on a rage, the Big Mom pirates were ill-prepared for it. And now this is even more true than before. Most of the fodder characters have been knocked out, including all of the chefs, excluding Struzan himself. So if Big Mom goes on a rage and, you know, thinks about Carmel and the, the whole flashback situation makes her desire Crokenbush, somebody needs to make that dessert for her, this will not be very easy to do, so it will take much longer to stop Big Mom. This could potentially lead to a situation where the Big Mom pirates are forced to try and stop Big Mom, who is essentially unstoppable, overpowered, over 9,000, insanely hacks. They probably won't succeed, so in order to even the playing field between the Straw Hats, the Straw Take Alliance, and the Big Mom pirates, enter Big Mom, essentially destroyer of her own country. And so I've heard some people speculate that maybe the Straw Hats find a way to run away, like, they still have brulee in their, their clutches, so all they really need to do is find a way to find a mirror and they could possibly escape. But I've said this before and it's especially true now, escape has never been an option. Uh, even if they think that it's an option because Big Mom is stated to be capable of killing the friends and family of those who tread on her dreams. Which the Straw Hats and you know the Capone and everyone have done at this point in time and so Big Mom states specifically how much she hates the Straw Hats in this chapter and so Big Mom must the situation with Big Mom must be resolved in Whole Cake Island either she must die or in some way taken care of no longer be an enemy in the story because if they just run away then Big Mom might very well hunt down their friends and family and kill them all this is why, guys, or at least one of the reasons why, amidst many other reasons, that I think that it's very plausible that if Big Mom goes on a rage, the Straw Hats will in some way help the Big Mom Pirates calm her down. I have some other speculations related to this thought that I want to share throughout the week, so I'll keep quiet on these for now, but if the Straw Hats in any way help the Big Mom Pirates, it may validate the, the Straw Hats essentially leaving without having to worry about the lives of their friends and family. Or maybe Big Mom straight up actually dies. And so we're running a bit long in this video and I think I've said most of everything that I really wanted to say and probably more than I wanted to say. But let's talk about Capone's move, Big Father, where he essentially turns into a giant castle. Now besides this just being in general just really cool, awesome hype, all these things, I really really enjoyed it. A lot of people are wondering if Capone has awakened his devil fruit. And I just want to say this guys, we have absolutely no idea whether this is true or not. This could be just a, a move that uh, 
Capone has for his Devil Fruit, and it has nothing to do with Awakening. Given the ambiguity with how Awakenings work per Devil Fruit, we just cannot be certain. But I do think that it's possible. Um, but then again, it seems like a pretty uh, clear-cut usage of a Castle Castle Devil Fruit. But yeah, guys, holy crap, this chapter felt so short. But then when you get down to talking about all the various elements of what it revealed, it was jam-packed full of juicy information. Uh, definitely a 10 out of 10 chapter in my mind. Again, wish it was a bit longer, but you can't always get what you want. Uh, but let me know what you thought about this chapter. Let me know if you noticed anything from the chapter that I didn't talk about, that you thought was interesting or whatever. Share your thoughts in the comments. Like the video if you liked the video. Dislike the video if you disliked the video. Subscribe if you want to be notified for my future content. And as always, guys, have a wonderful day.